Project Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in this morning. So today we've got a really cool trailer we want you to show you. We're really excited about this one. Uh, this is a 2022 Cimarron Lone Star stock combo. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the drawing. I'm going to kind of go over some specs for you. Uh, just kind of showing you how the trailer lays out, some dimensions on it itself. And then we'll kind of jump into it. But like I said, it's a 24 foot stock combo. So we're 24 foot on the floor. We're seven and a half foot wide. And the standard height on a Cimarron is seven foot one, which this trailer is. So on this one here, we've got a front tack room on it. It's a five six short wall with a four foot offset. Uh, our first stall is six six. And then behind that, and I'm going off the dimension, so it's six six from the partition wall to the back of that first center cut gate there. And then that back compartment on the driver's side is 12 foot. Again, with a four foot offset, so it's an eight foot on that on that tail side there. So, um, but this is a trailer. Uh, we wanted to try this on a stock combo. We've we've done this uh, tack layout on some three and four horse, five horse, six horse setups. Uh, it's become extremely well accepted. It just works extremely well. It flows well uh, from the standpoint if you're trying to tack on either side of this trailer. It just really works extremely well. So let's take a look at it and, and we'll jump into this here. Um, very first thing is, is when we're just looking at this at the front of the trailer here. So we have a manual hand crank single leg jack. Spare tires located to the left there. Even the spare tire is an aluminum wheel, uh, which I'll show you when we get to the back of the trailer, but that's, that's standard, these aluminum wheels are in these Cimarron's. So when we're talking about these trailers, we're talking all aluminum construction. You have an eight year hardware warranty, three year, uh, excuse me, eight year structure warranty, three year hardware warranty on these Cimarron's. And then there's also some tire warranty, which I'll get into here in a second. Uh, but industry's best floor, four inch centers, so wherever you have a horse or a cow or anything standing on these, on these trailers, they're standing on a support beam. I'll show you kind of some of the other, uh, just kind of features and benefits and how these trailers are constructed when we kind of get into it here. But again, single leg, manual hand crank jack. The other cool thing is on these, and, and I really like this, this is something kind of small, might kind of sound a little bit silly, but this is our handle for the manual hand crank. But this also doubles as a lug wrench for us. So we've always got a lug wrench on hand on the trailer. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe uh, you, you hook onto it with one truck kind of consistently. That's where all the tools are. And then you hook on with another truck and you don't carry that type of stuff in that truck. You know, you already have that here on the trailer itself. So on the drawing, if you kind of noticed the neck of this trailer is eight foot two. So a lot of other manufacturers will do a seven, six or seven, eight foot long nose. I really like that Cimarron puts a little bit more extension on theirs. I think it also helps on how well these trailers pull. They always try to put axles in the perfect placement for balance. Uh, but also I think this neck helps with the way they pull. The other thing is if you're running with like a long box pickup and your tailgates down, a lot of times other manufacturers, your tailgates right up against your spare tire where on the Cimarron's when we drop that tailgate, I can walk behind it. I mean, there's still a good amount of space um, to get behind the truck itself. You know, trying to shimmy to get that, uh, that leg picked up is not, never fun, but there's plenty of room on these Cimarron's because of that extended nose. The other thing, this has been a challenge over the last couple of years is these taller trucks. Every manufacturer has gone up in, in bed height. Uh, so that has become a little bit of a challenge. The truck manufacturers, I hate to say it, they really don't care. It's, it's, it's on us in the trailer world to figure it out. So what you'll notice is, is we're having more of a challenge getting trailers running level and bed clearance. Kind of seems like you get one or the other. And you'll really notice it on older trailers, late 90s, early 2000s with a newer pickup. You'll notice that the, the, the bed is almost right up against this drop or it's really nosed up and we're running on the back axle. And that's not what we want. So nobody wants to tear up a bed. Nobody wants to tear up an axle. So what we've done is, is industry standards, 50 inches over the last, you know, 15 years or so. We've gone on in here, uh, TransWest. This is our inventory. This is what we look at every time we order a trailer is we look at this gooseneck drop wall height. So on this trailer, the way it's set up is we've now made this 53 inches. 
And by doing that 53 inch gooseneck drop, we can adjust our coupler, we can make this trailer run level, and we have bed clearance. Now there's, there, uh, in you know, certain circumstances, air ride trailers, maybe 17 five inch wheels, 19 five wheels, where we already have the box picked up, where we don't have to do that. So we'll leave them at 50. So we're kind of taking it a case by case basis, but a lot of these standard using trailers, stock combos, three, four horse goosenecks, stock trailers, um, you know, a lot of those were just gone in and done that 53 inch gooseneck drop for that reason. So now let's dump, jump into this tack room. This is what I'm really excited to show you. This is such a cool setup. Like I mentioned, it's a five, six short wall. And then we have a four foot offset. So this is nine, six on the long wall here. But, you know, a lot of times and, and a lot of these trailers, how they're equipped is usually the tack doors on one side or the other. Here at TransWest, if we have a single entry door going into a tack room, we will typically try to put it on passenger side. And the reason why is, is now it's curbside to where traffic is street side, you know, on the driver's side of the, the trailer itself. So if you get in an emergency situation, you have to get in your attack room, maybe that's where your, uh, you know, your ramp or your jack is to change a tire or you have some other type of emergency on the side of the road. We want you away from that traffic to keep you safe. So a lot of times we try to keep those tack uh, doors over here on passenger side. But one of the other challenges is you have two sides of this trailer. So when you're tacking, when you're, when you're saddling, unsaddling, getting ready, you know, I mean, it makes a little bit of a challenge if you're the guy that has your horse on the other side of the trailer and now you gotta lug your saddle around. So our thought process and how this has been accepted is, is now it's almost like a, a, a his and her side tack room because now we have these swing outs on both sides. So this is a 42 inch wide door we put a little bit bigger door on these with swing outs because nobody wants their saddles hitting those door frames when you're swinging them in and out. So we make that door a little bit wider. As you can see, we've got a three tier saddle rack. It mirrors it on the other side, but we'll show you that in here in a second. But these are adjustable as well. So I can slide these up or down. If I want to add more pads, I can. I can add more blanket bars to this if I want. But the other thing I want you to notice is when this is swung out, Look at the gap between that actual function and the door itself. When that is swung out, I can walk into this tack room, even if there's saddles on here. To where a lot of other setups with a swing out, it fills up the whole door and you can't get in or out. So here it is out, it's just on a gas shock. So once it swings in, it'll tuck behind. Now look at this opening here. That's what's so cool about this setup that I'll show you here in a second when you step in. But there's so much room in this tack room. We put the step on the door. It just makes it a lot easier getting in and out of these trailers. Nice, easy trans uh, transition between the ground and actually into the tack room itself. You've got a uh, brush tray on the door for smaller miscellaneous items. And then we have a four tier blanket pole rack here on the door. It's on a gas shock as well. So it will swing out and then swing back against the, the door itself. So now, I mean, you can see the floor space in this trailer itself. And when we get to the other side uh, and I swing this other saddle rack in, I'll show you still how much floor space is truly in this trailer itself. But we've gone in, Again, try to, try to get creative, try to give you some options uh, that really function well, make the trailer a little bit more user-friendly for you. One of the first things is, is on this deck, I like to go in and put windows in here, in the actual gooseneck itself, because on this deck, you know, we could throw a mattress in here, we could throw a bedroll, sleeping bags, anything like that. You can see out of the trailer. I would get a little claustrophobic if it was all sealed up. Um, but also you get a cross breeze. So you can create a cross breeze through here, keeping it nice and cool. You have an insulated roof that's standard on all Cimarron's. So it does keep your stall area for your animals and then in here a lot cooler for you. About 20% difference um, compared to an aluminum sheeted roof. And, and on some real hot days, that makes a big difference. Uh, over to the right, you'll notice that tray. That tray is to actually store our plexiglass that I'll show you here in a few minutes. Um, one thing that I like to recommend to customers is throw a roll of masking tape and a black Sharpie in there. And the reason why is when we go to take out driver's side upper air gap, 
you know, I can I can tape all that together. It's not going to leave a real sticky residue, and I can write driver side upper, driver side lower on another section. So then now it's all in one piece. Um, it's a lot easier putting them back in to the actual track itself that I'll show you here in a few minutes. But so we can store that up out of the way. Located behind that is a shelf with a clothes rod. There's a lip to this, so you can put some items in there that aren't going to slide off. But a great place to, to hang some clothes. Um, you know, it's kind of up out of the way. This is a little bit longer wall because it is the, the long wall of this tack setup itself. We thought, hey, let's, let's put something there that's useful for the customer. So I really like that shelf there. Directly below it is a 12 inch boot box. We only went a, a partial way across the gooseneck drop wall itself. Uh, but that's just because we're dealing with the short wall and then this, this saddle rack when it swung in. So just giving us a little bit more floor space. I didn't want it to, to, to get too tight. Um, but that, that boot box itself is really good for smaller miscellaneous items. And then also you can hop right up into the gooseneck on this. So it's really easy to do there. Uh, if we look behind this saddle rack that we swung in, You'll notice we've got a, I'll get this out of the way so you can see it here, but a 25 gallon gravity feed water tank. So now we can carry 25 gallons of water from home, uh, you know, or anywhere else. Maybe you got a finicky horse, maybe you're going to a trailhead, maybe you're going to an event. It's always nice to have that. Hydrants aren't maybe always where you can park. So this way you at least have some water on board. And again, it's just gravity feed. Carpeted the entire partition wall put you two rows of bridle hooks. We understand everyone's carrying a lot of stuff with them. We wanted to give you a lot of, of storage there. But again, a really good setup. And then we've also kind of thought maybe a little bit ahead for you. So up here on the ceiling is we've framed for our AC. Now, we, we would have to put a 30 amp power package to this trailer, but at least the framework's done. So you wouldn't believe on how simple it is and how small of an option it is to do this little piece when we're ordering this trailer on how much money and time that will save uh, if you do that after the fact. If we did not frame for that, again, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of money to go in and frame for it and then, uh, you know, cut out that hole and then obviously put our power to it and then actual AC. But again, we kind of went ahead and just did that on this. We do that on our horse trailers because some people like to add that stuff down the road. The other thing is, is we put light switches on each door. So again, since there's two access doors to this, we wanted you to have the ability to whichever door you hopped in, you could reach in there and turn on those LED lights that are on the inside of that tack room. So now as we get out here, since this is a seven and a half foot wide, you'll notice there's a little bit of a running board on each side of the trailer. And then obviously our wheel wells there. Those wheel wells are bolt on too. So again, saving you some time and money. If you have an issue where we tear up a fender, maybe we hit something, maybe we had a blowout, things do happen, but that can be bolted off and a new one can be bolted on. So it saves a lot of time, a lot of labor, a lot of cost to you um, from a weld on because we got to cut it off and then re-weld the new one on there. So a lot quicker, a lot easier there. That's standard on all Cimarron's as well. Doesn't matter if it's this extruded uh, wheel well or their teardrop styles, all of them are, are uh, bolt on. Two 7,000 pound Dexter rubber torsion axles, 16 inch wheels. You'll notice the green tab. These are nitrogen filled tires. Nitrogen will, won't allow PSI levels to fluctuate drastically. They use them on airplanes. Think about altitude changes, temperature changes. You know, we're dealing with it, especially here in Colorado. We're starting to work into the fall. We're going to have really cool nights still get hot during the day. Major temperature uh, changes that can cause PSI levels to change, causing blowouts. I mentioned a little bit on the standard aluminum wheels. So again, standard on all Cimarron's, but also you get one year, no questions asked warranty on these tires. So if you catch road debris, a nail, you have a blowout, you take some pictures of some codes, you send it in the lion's head, they'll send you a new tire. You also have two years of roadside assistance on these. So again, just you know, a, a, a company that stands behind their product. And Cimarron does a great job and the vendors that they use do a great job as well. So since this is a stock combo, 
You know, a lot of times we can go in and you'll notice a lot of tie rings. Well, we opted to go ahead and put a tie rail itself. So the tie rail just gives you the flexibility to tie horses anywhere you want, multiple horses on, on either side of this trailer. The other thing, here's that plexiglass I was showing you. So upper and lower. What they always do is kind of from the, from the front back, it's four foot from that point there to the middle of where we can insert the actual plexiglass into the track. Now this, this track is standard on every single stock trailer that, that Cimarron builds. So even if you see a Cimarron that doesn't have this plexiglass, that track's there for you. You can go ahead and get that plexiglass. It's pretty easy. You just get one ahead of the other and it just slides right out. Again, I would take passenger lower, tape it together, ride on it, stick it up in that tray. Then again, I know exactly where these four pieces of plexiglass go when I go to put them back in the trailer. I don't want to be messing around like a puzzle trying to figure out where each one of them goes. So again, real easy to remove and replace. We put a load light here, a 16 inch awning light, shoots down and out, you get light, good light coverage over where you're gonna be saddling and unsaddling. Button lights are standard on all 22 models. They're really clean, they put off a lot of light. I think they look really sharp uh, on these trailers, really dresses them up well. As we get to the back here, you can see a single gate. Nice big cam latch over here to the left two eight inch awning lights, similar to that one we just looked at, plexiglass in the back. One thing that's interesting is, and, and a lot of people aren't aware of this, but think about when you're driving down dirt roads, back of your pickup, back of your vehicle, that, that dust swirls at the back of the, the vehicle and it'll cover it. Well, that does the same on trailers when we're driving down dirt roads. But if we don't have these, these, uh, this plexiglass in here and have these air gaps open, it'll suck back into the trailer. So now our animals are gonna be covered in some of that, but more importantly, they're gonna be breathing it. So from a health standpoint, we like to, to have this plexiglass at the back or at least have that ability to, if you are driving down those roads, for that reason itself. So now what we're looking at is the stall area. These stock combos have become so popular because of their flexibility. So yes, we can throw some horses on here. We can throw some livestock on here. We can also throw some toys on here. Four-wheelers, side-by-sides, items like that. Uh, that's why these combos, because of their versatility, why they're so popular. But we're really happy with the way that this, this uh, trailer laid out. Um, what we have is because we have a slant wall there, we actually have a center gate that is on a slant as well. So it matches that offset. This first stall from the gate to the partition wall is six foot six. And how we came up with that figure is on a standard slant load horse trailer, those stalls or those drop windows are 39 inches a piece. So if it was a two horse, two 39 inch drops would be six six. So that's what we're dealing with here in this first stall. So you can easily, uh, in my opinion, you can get two fairly good sized horses, even saddled and get them into this first compartment here. But it's a full uh, gate itself. So it works, you know, somewhat as like a stud stall. Um, you can do a couple different things. You know, you could throw some extra bedding feed in there, um, throw a couple horses in there. You can throw some cattle, you can throw some horses on the back, kind of do whatever you want, but you have that flexibility. And it has that slam latch um, from the standpoint of it's, it's safe. I like slam latches for that reason. Um, nobody wants to try to hold a gate in place to go ahead and lock it. It's just easier and quicker and safer to be able to slam that. It's got this aluminum cast piece that's been powder coated with a heavy UHMW plastic paddle. So we don't have metal to metal contact creating a lot of rattle and more noise in here. You'll notice a little bit of wheel well in here because it's seven and a half foot wide, you're gonna have that wheel well on each side. If you want no wheel well in a trailer on these Cimarron's, you need to go with their, their standard 610 wide. But again, we just opted to go with a little bit wider option here. So we did that kick mat on tail side and then up against the partition wall itself. We put a tie rail in here for you as well because when your plexiglass is in, you know, we can't tie to a post because of the plexiglass is in the way. We can't 
you know, loop that around there. So we went in, we put a tie rail kind of between the two air gaps, the full length of this stall area here. So again, you can tie anywhere you want. Obviously when the plexiglass is out, you can still tie to an upright post if you want there. Like I mentioned, insulated roof. It's standard on every single one of these Cimarron's. It's really stout as well. It's a half inch thick. It's a reinforced honeycomb design. It will take substantial hail. Uh, we've dealt with hail last couple summers. You know, knock on wood, we haven't had the big hail to really do damage to any Cimarron roofs. It has to be substantially large hail to do anything. I can walk on this roof, I can jump on this roof and I will not dent it. That's how strong it is. But it also, more importantly, keeps the stallery cooler, keeping your animals more comfortable. And then we went ahead and put some roof vents in here as well. We put four of them, kind of started at the front, worked our way back so you can manipulate some airflow through this trailer. Uh, a breeze makes a big difference. Think about 95 degree day, you know, dead of summer, no breeze at all. It's hot, it's not comfortable. That little bit of a breeze kicks up, you, you feel a lot better about life. And believe me, your animals will feel better, you know, getting that airflow through here as well. And then you've got three LED lights. All of these lights, these load lights, these interior lights, they're all on, all on individual switches right back here. So I can run one side, the back, the other side, or the interior all individually. I don't have to have one, you know, everything on at once or, or uh, um, you know, one side or the other. You know, it, it gives you that ability to do whatever you want as far as flexibility goes on, on your light coverage. Again, tie rail, like on the other side, a tie rail runs up to the escape door. So in that first stall, we do have an escape door. We have a chest bar that goes across there as well, just for safety purposes. But again, if you have to hop in or out type of a scenario, you can do that really easily, having that escape door on the trailer. And then just ahead of that, there is our second tack door, again, mirroring the other side. Three-tier swing out saddle rack, four-tier blanket pole rack, brush tray on the door, fold up step on a 42 inch wide door. So again, the 42 inch wide, again, it's for these swing outs when we're going in and out with things, we don't want them hitting this door frame. Um, I really like that. These guys are nice and stout too. I'll show you when I push this guy in, once it hits a breaking point, that gas shock will take it and just moves nice and slow in there. But again, we, we wanted to do a 42 inch wide because of that swing out. We had to have the, the proper bracing um, ahead of it and behind it. That's why we kind of like this five, six setup. And like I mentioned, now that this is swung in, here you can see this floor space. There is a ton of room in this tack room. So again, such a cool setup because you can do, now, you know, either side you're tacking up on this trailer itself, you've got access into that tack room. Again, it was extremely well accepted on our on some other trailers, more of our traditional slant load trailers. But we wanted to try this on a stock combo. Uh, we just feel it's got a lot of, again, appeal to everybody on how this is. Now, maybe you're not set on a 24 footer. Maybe you want something a little bit shorter. Maybe you want something a little bit bigger. We can do that. We have complete flexibility when we're building a Cimarron trailer. I always tell everybody it is a fingerprint. Every one of these guys we can make different. We never order a standard trailer here at TransWest from Cimarron. We like to put our own little stamp on it, whether it's that 53 inch gooseneck drop, these type of tack setups, light setups, uh, gate setups. We can do a little bit of everything. So we can completely build this trailer to your specifications. If you want it 24 inches or 24 foot and three inches long, we can do it. We can do three inch increments. We can go taller, we can go shorter, whatever you want. I'm gonna give you the stock number on this one for reference. Again, it's a 2022 Cimarron Lone Star stock combo, 24 footer. Stock number is 5N211003. So we've got some other combos on order. They're going fast. We've got 24s and 20s. Those are kind of our most popular, but again, if you wanna put your own touch on it and build you something, if you have a little bit of time, we can help you out with that and walk you through the whole process. So give anybody a call on the sales team. That number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for tuning in have a good day.